This video is sponsored by Audible. Go to audible.com slash browntable or text browntable to 500-500 to get a free audiobook, two free Audible originals, and a 30-day free trial. Come on! Come on! Just click it. Don't change any settings. Just click it. Can you believe it's been 11 years since the first Iron Man? Damn, I'm old. I'm about to have a midlife crisis at 20 years old, my god. But forget about me and my insecurities, today we're going to be talking about all things Marvel. And it's not just me talking about Marvel. In this series, One Marvel is Seen, creators like myself, lessons from the screenplay, high top films, Mr. Sunday movies, and more will talk about specific scenes from MCU movies that we love. And all of this is thanks to Matt from Nando V Movies who decided to assemble this incredible team of content creators. And if you want to check out all the videos in the One Marvel is Seen series, make sure to check out the playlist down below. So guys, Endgame, huh? As of this very moment, Endgame still hasn't come out yet, and I've been avoiding spoilers like the plague, and if any one of you spoils it for anyone in the comment section, oh boy. Shut up! My hype is through the roof, I waited in a digital line for my tickets for three hours to get to see it in IMAX on Thursday opening night at 10.30 like a crazy person, and I have class the next morning, so please, pray for me. My teacher's a bit intense. I guess you could say I'm really excited to see the send-off to all these characters that I love. The MCU is this generation's Star Wars, there's no doubt about it. Other studios have tried to replicate its formula, its characters and charm, its stories, and all of them have done a pretty crappy job. Honestly, maybe even the MCU is having a hard time replicating its own formula because... Oh god, I mean... Oof. Either way though, we're at the end of this 11 year long journey, and the ones that are spearheading it, other than Kevin Feige, are the Russo brothers. They directed Infinity War, they directed Endgame, but they got their start with Captain America, The Winter Soldier, one of the absolute best MCU movies to have ever been made, and I absolutely adore it. So prepare yourself, because I'm about to gush about this movie, as well as the MCU as a whole. And if you're okay with that, then let's come over to the table. Yes! Welcome to the table! <laughs> <laughs> when do we start? I want to talk about the end of Captain America The Winter Soldier, more specifically, this scene. And this scene represents what Marvel Cinematic Universe films are to me. Character-driven stories. Steve Rogers grew up without a father, and his mother passed as well, but not before she could instill values onto her son. He grew up learning what it meant to be a good person. Whatever happens tomorrow, you must promise me one thing. Is that you will stay who you are. A good man. That's very important. It's important to know who Steve Rogers is and his core values. It's these values that made him keep trying to enlist in the army. It's these values that made him a super soldier. And it's these values that made him a respected figure in World War II. No, I'm not gonna sit in the factory, Bucky. Bucky, come on, there are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. That's what you don't understand. This isn't about me. Steve Rogers is a self-sacrificing character, and one that sees things in black and white pretty much. This is right and this is wrong. Turning him over to the present and he is now a man out of time, struggling to find his place in the world, a world which is a lot more grey than he remembers. That's what makes Captain America the Winter Soldier work. A man is placed in a not so good environment and something has to change. Either Cap has to become more grey or the world has to become more black and white. Cap struggles to find friends, people he can trust. He can't trust Natasha Romanoff, and he most certainly can't trust Nick Fury. Or can he? You know, it's kind of hard to trust someone when you don't know who that someone really is. It's the journey of discovering who is your friend and who is your foe that makes Captain America the Winter Soldier work, and all of this comes to a head when Steve finally reunites with his childhood friend, who he discovers is now a Hydra operative. And when Captain America storms S.H.I.E.L.D. in the third act of the movie, he says one very specific line. I know I'm asking a lot, but the price of freedom is high, and it's a price I'm willing to pay. Captain America Steve Rogers wants freedom for all, above everything else, as cheesy as that sounds. He wants everything to go right, he wants people to be vanquished, and he wants people to be free. He's a truly good, virtuous individual who doesn't care if he has to run from the government or sacrifice his life to achieve freedom. He's done it multiple times already. And when Steve wants freedom for everyone, that goes for Bucky as well. He doesn't want Bucky to remain indoctrinated by Hydra. He wants his friend back. And now we know that Steve would die for his friend. 
Now that we know Steve's core values, let's talk about his relationship with Bucky and why this scene is so emotionally powerful. How about you? You ready to follow Captain America into the jaws of death? Hell no. That little guy from Brooklyn, I was too dumb not to run away from a fight. I'm following him. Bucky fell into the icy clutches of death and Steve couldn't save him. And now Steve has a second chance of saving his friend. Before the third act, Bucky even remembers Steve and has his memory wiped before he can properly remember anything. So the audience knows that Bucky remembers and still cares for Steve. Their relationship drives the third act of the movie. We even get a flashback to Steve and Bucky in their past lives when they were friends. But I can get by on my own. I'm with you to the end of the line, pal. Steve approaches Bucky here, and he doesn't call him the Winter Soldier, the name he's been given. He calls him Buck. People are gonna die, Buck. To Steve, the man in front of him is still his friend. The scene becomes filled with pathos. It's all about the emotions running through these characters as they fight. Steve wants to save Bucky, and Bucky tries to fight his memories and states, You're my mission. The story shifts from having to save the country, and eventually the world, to having to save one person. As Steve is able to get the ships, which are about to kill thousands of people, to fire on each other. The most powerful part of this entire conflict comes from Steve saving Bucky. But Bucky takes advantage of this and starts to pummel Steve. And Steve allows himself to get beat up by his friend. What we realize is that early on, Steve is only fighting Bucky because if he doesn't, thousands of people will die and he needs to get to that central console. But now that that's over, we realize that Steve never wanted to fight Bucky and he allows himself to get hurt because Bucky needs to lash out and get his emotions and memories in order. And he's willing to die to help the person he cares about. And after getting pummeled, we get the most important line of the movie, which is also a callback to this previous scene. Then finish it. Because I'm with you to the end of the line. The MCU has its fair share of problems and can be very plot-driven sometimes, but when it focuses on character, their ups and downs, their relationships, their struggles, the MCU dominates. The movie is about a perfect man having to face an imperfect world, surrounded by flawed characters and flawed ideals, who has to tear down a corrupt system and hopefully turn the gray world he lives in a little bit more black and white. The movie is all about what characters mean to each other. What does it mean to trust someone? What does it mean to love someone? It's in character moments like this, and this, and this, that the MCU is at its best when these films decide to tell stories about people. The movie isn't just about Steve and Bucky either. Steve and Nat have their conflict as well, and Natasha Romanoff is at her best in this movie due to her characterization. Steve in this new world doesn't know who to trust, and with S.H.I.E.L.D. being secretly run by Hydra, he can't really trust anyone. The movie even begins with Natasha conducting secret activities on the side, and part of the movie revolves around them learning to trust each other. Would you trust me to do it? I would now. I think that's why Captain America the Winter Soldier is one of the best Marvel movies, because it focuses so much on characters' behavior and their attitude towards the world and to others. It focuses on character and how important characters are to each other. That's what makes the characters in the entire MCU work for the most part. That's why the Avengers worked. That's why they keep working. Even if there isn't a lot going on with the characters, even if they don't really have an arc at times, the characters feel real because other characters make it so. The way they interact, the way they care about each other. The chemistry behind the characters makes the journey worth it. That's why Infinity War's ending was so devastating. Because we know it's not about us. It's about how they'll face a world with the people they care about gone. That to me is why the MCU is so powerful. It manages to make us care about characters by having characters care about each other. So, I have one last question for you. You ready to follow Captain America into the jaws of death? It's important to know how characters work in a story. Story is an excellent book on how to write compelling stories by Robert McKee and you can start listening to it now by signing up for Audible. I think that was my smoothest integration by far. It's just... So what does Audible stand for, you ask? Well, Audible stands for...
Audible is a leading provider of audio information and entertainment on the internet. They have a vast collection of audiobooks and other audio products. And you can become a user now by signing up as an Audible listener, which gives you book credits each month for a low monthly fee. You can download and listen to the books you buy on your devices on the go as well. If you didn't like your audiobook, you can exchange it, no questions asked. With Audible, you own your books, so your books are yours to keep, so you can go back and re-listen anytime, even if you cancel your membership. Even better, Audible is the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now with Audible Originals, the selection has gotten even better. With Audible, you get access to an unbeatable selection of audiobooks, including bestsellers, motivation, mysteries, thrillers, memoirs, and more. So go to audible.com slash browntable or text browntable to 500-500 for a free audiobook, two free Audible Originals, and a 30-day free trial. Thank you so much Audible for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much for watching this video. Before I go, I just wanted to make a public service announcement. Browntable has a Discord server. That's right, and what better person than Low Top Films, one of the mods of the server, to talk about it? Yo, what is going on my tables? This is a official Browntable Discord server announcement. It's the best Discord server ever created, and you can see the best Mauricio memes on there. It's pretty dead. But if you join, it will be amazing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the server's up and running, guys. But not just that, Browntable also has a subreddit, which is great and full of really lovely people as well. If you guys send me memes, I will love you till the end times. Browntable also has merch. We're working on creating new designs as well, so stay tuned. And remember to follow at IRC underscore anime on Twitter to stay updated on Interstellar Ranger Commence, the anime Browntable's working on. Thank you so much, patrons. These guys are the best, honestly. I wish I had more time to do more, and I'm gonna do a lot of crazy stuff during the summer, try to expand it a little bit, you know? So thank you so much for sticking by me. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you all for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.